brave girl How you do the things that you do Don't mind me How did I get in your belly? And I remember he was like eight and I was just like, okay, we have to explain this in a way where it's yeah. not going to be scary, but in a way of like, you know, people that love each other mm -hmm. come make the decision to have beautiful children and we connected and, you know, I will tell you more, but it is more of an intimacy that is for adults and understanding that's what happened. And he I was like, I think that's okay. perfect. And you didn't give like the actual anaconda yeah, yet, detail. but you were straightforward and honest. Like yeah. I literally thought like babies just grew in bellies. And so I <laughs> vowed that like my kids would never learn that. So same mm -hmm. thing. My daughter came to me when I was pregnant with my baby last year, she's eight. And she said, mom, how do the babies come out? And I was like, oh shoot, I have one try to make this good. And I just <laughs> was straight fired. I'm like, oh, the baby's going to come out of my vagina. And she was just like, okay. Yeah. Like straight facts. She yeah. didn't care. No mm -hmm. emotions attached it's to it. It's interesting that you say the age eight because we've already had the sex talk with my kids, but sometimes I think they just need to hear it a few times. They'll forget. Oh, yeah. They just don't sure. understand. Mm -hmm. yeah. So the same thing. My eight-year-old just last week was like wanted to understand again. Like he already knows, yeah. but like I think he just, well, he knows how babies are made, but I think he just needed some better More understanding detail. of how the babies come out. Yeah. Right. And so I use the exact same language, you know, the baby comes out of the vagina and he was like, mom, <laughs> you just said this. And the, I think the reason why is because like the kids have used body potty language at the dinner table, which we have said that is not appropriate. <laughs> yeah, right. And my kids have internalized that as it's not appropriate to talk about bodies at Ever. any point. And I have to remind them, no, it's like there's there's A places, place. like yeah. not at the dinner table, you know? Right. So when yeah. he goes that, I just looked at them, I'm like, yeah, comes out of her vagina, vagina, vagina. That's what I said. <laughs> and, and, you know, I'm like, you just have to accept that, you know? So, you know, I had to just kind of sh shock it out of him. But it is an interesting time. They, they do ask these questions at the appropriate time. And, and instead of shunning them and saying, we'll talk about it later or this, like, that's a good time. And it's funny because when we first showed up, both Brittany and I were like, I've got a book. <laughs> I've got a book I want to bring to the show. And I'm like, I've got a book too. That's awesome. And then we both walked in. Is that him? These ones are mine. Those yeah. ones are yours. We both walked in. Boom. And I'm, it's the yes. same collection of books. And it totally match is talking about what we're talking about right now. And, um, Brittany, you can share where you found it and what you've gone through, but the gist of it is that these are four books for four different age levels yeah. for your kids. Right. So there's ages three to five, five to eight, eight to 11, and 11 to 14. And each one gives enough information that's appropriate for your kid at that level. And then it goes, it goes deeper on the other ones. Yeah. And, you know, you'd have to decide as an adult, you know, as a parent, if you, if you feel like your kid is ready for the next book before the numbers say so. I mean, you know your kid's maturity more than anybody does. But at least it's, you know, you have some options there. Um, and, you know, it doesn't get into, I think, some of the things that are still left to talk about that you might want to talk with them, you know, before they get married or they start, I don't know, dating or something, like to that extent. But I mean, you get it from beginning to end, for sure. I love that it's a gateway. So a lot of people are saying like, how do I just teach my kid? It's not like out of the blue, he comes home from school and he's like, hey, little Joey, today we're talking about sex. Like just start with a book and then the conversation will come naturally. Your kids will be like, well, mom, yeah. what about this? So like, I have so many friends who are like, I just don't know like when to approach it. I'm like, don't like, just read a book. And then the conversation and will it's naturally a question. flow. I think it's also when you're watching TV, it's, it's right there in our right. face. And they're like, I remember sometimes like you watch TV back in the day and your parents would cover your eyes when people were kissing. Like, yes, you know, like time. that, it's just kind of like kissing is okay. It's explaining to the child. So for me, like, of course, I, we don't watch crazy, but if they like somebody kissing, like kids are like, ew, and I'm like, no, it's just two people, yeah. you know, that cares. Like explaining it instead of like shaming it. And right. I think each conversation then becomes slowly. I think it should be something that started when they're young mm -hmm. and going by, you know, mm -hmm. age appropriateness, you know, instead of like, here's all this information, take it and leave it and that's it. I think yeah. it's also important to, when your kids start having those feelings, to like acknowledge them. Cause like I was always like, I can never date boys. I never want my mom to know I like a boy. So like my little girl who's eight, this year she came home and was like, oh my gosh, this boy likes me. And like, ooh, gross. And I was like, no, that's awesome. Like you're gonna yeah. start having those feelings. And like, do you like anyone? Like let's, should we get a Valentine? And she was no. like, I'm allowed to like someone. I'm like, yeah, cause mm. eventually you're gonna marry someone. And so like, awesome. that's super awesome. So like validate those feelings and then be like, those are good. And those are them. right. And I instead think of being yeah, like, ew, good. you like boys. Like my husband sometimes, yeah. <laughs> he'll, he'll tell me like, He'll probably be mad I said this, but he's always like teasing my daughter like, ooh, do you like a boy? I'm like, don't tease her for that because one, she'll never want to come to us again. And yeah. two, like, I want her to like boys. So yeah. like, let's foster that. Yeah. Right, right. Well, so you asked the question, would you rather the school teach it or you teach it or somebody else teach it? And so here's the reason why I want to teach it. 
is because I want to foster that relationship with my kid. Yes. I want to know, I want them to know that it's a comfortable topic for us. And so then they come back to me when they start having those puberty feelings where they're attracted to the to somebody People. and then they're mm -hmm. they're wanting to go there I need that door to be open and if I don't start that conversation with them then that they assume the door is closed even though I'm like no the door's open it's been open yeah. the whole time they're like but you never talked about it and they might find a door open somewhere else with a friend exactly. Exactly. Somebody, yeah. somebody's exactly. gonna teach them and I want mm -hmm. it to be me and I want that relationship where it's an ongoing thing yeah. where they can keep coming yeah, to yeah. Me. and for me if I can give advice one last thing in that home thing working with teenagers and seeing it that relationship with a parent, that open relationship, like having to know when you're a mom and when you're a friend, is the number one thing that can help your kids in the long term, especially even like the sexual relationship. Because when they feel like they've done something and they feel like they have that relationship with mom where they can be like, hey, this is how I'm feeling, this is what's happening, they're more likely to come to you where if it's, there's a closed door and they're not be able to come to you, yes, they do go to the friend, they do go to somebody else, and that person educate them totally different. And they will never come to you and let you know. But I've seen both, where the parents is involved, they have a relationship, and the parents doesn't shame them. They have that relationship, like, we all would want our kids to wait and make it special, but if they don't, they have that outlet to be mm -hmm. like, this is what just happened, this is what I'm feeling, what we recommend. And then always stop. Like, one thing we always teach our parents when we do parenting class, when a kid come to you with anything crazy, take a minute, take a deep breath. You can even be like, okay, let's talk about it. Because your first reaction will be what will set the next when something else come up. That's good yeah. advice. That's that is good. Advice. So let's say I asked you guys all to come to a professional dance class with me because I would consider myself a professional dancer. What would you guys feel? Yes. I would say cool. Or you might feel like anxious, nervous. Can I go in the back? A little like <laughs> oh. unsure about no, it, right? Now let's front. say I you were all room. professional dancers and I said, let's go to a class. How would you feel? Then I'd be like, I don't, I'm going to teach that Excited, class. Excited, confident. You know, it's, it's the same thing about topics. I'm and I teach this in self-defense and it goes hand in hand with sex education. The mm -hmm. more you're talking about these things, the more you grow confidence and your kids. Yes. So you might get to where you're old and your kids come to you and say, Mom, I never felt comfortable about coming to tell you about this sexual experience. You might sit there and be like, well, I was totally open to talk about that, but I, as the parent, never talked about it. Yeah. So they're like, my mom doesn't talk about those kind of things. Even though you're willing and waiting, but like you have to be the one in your house to yeah. start these conversations. Mm -hmm. So then they're like, oh, that. my mom, she's cool to talk about this. She's not gonna freak out. Like you have to be the one talking about it so they don't feel nervous and anx yeah. anxious. And I yeah. think, you know, we're, I think a lot of parents are, and I, 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 I can understand that. Like I have a 14 year old, we've talked about sex before in the past, but I have to admit like, where I think the angst I think can come sometimes with those types of conversation is because, you know, you're afraid you you you, you want to be that person, but you don't want them to do these things, um, and and there's this like, well, how do I, how do I, tell them I don't want them to do this thing, but do it in a way that isn't awkward or that they understand and that they listen to me, and so I think a lot of parents because it's just so awkward they end up avoiding it. I know from my, like, my experience as a kid, um, my, you know, I got all the talk, right? And I was definitely taught from an early age, like, you save yourself to your marriage. Um, there's no, you know, you, you don't make any, no making out because making out leads to sex. <laughs> and therefore, there's no making out. And, you know, that's it, all right? So I, I made out with my, my boyfriend at age 15. And um, I, I did not know. My mom never, my mom and dad never taught me this to me. But I did not know that making out was going to make me feel aroused mm. and you know you hear you hear about you hear about like I've heard about orgasm and those types of things when I was learning about sex but what I wish so much that my mom had said to me was something like the reason why we don't want you making out is because when you make out you're going to feel these feelings that are going to be so intense and you're going to love it okay and it's going to feel like love it's gonna feel like love to you. And it's, that's gonna make it, sometimes it, it's so strong, it's hard to stop it, and then it goes, you go further, and then you, you have sex. And that's why we wanna protect you from that, so I, we, we really would, don't want you doing that. So what happened with me is, I knew I wasn't supposed to be making out, but I didn't know what happened when you made out. Like, I didn't know what the effects were. Mm -hmm. And I, I started to feel like these feelings, and I, I genuinely started feeling like, I love him. This, mm -hmm. I thought, I didn't know this was just horny. Like right. I didn't know, I, I thought this was love. Oh my gosh, I love him. 
and he loves me. This is amazing, yeah. and I want to marry him. And therefore, because we're going to get married, because he obviously loves me, because look at us, right? This is magical and beautiful and wonderful. And I slept with him. I was 15 years old. Wow. And my life totally changed after that. I sunk into depression, all the weird, crazy stuff that happens when a 15-year-old girl is having sex because she shouldn't be, she's not mentally able to handle that. And I'm not blaming my parents because, mm -hmm. I, I totally in a sense, because I know that there were many layers. Like I had daddy issues. I, all I really wanted was a boy's attention. There were so many different layers to it. But I have to wonder if someone had sat me down and said, this is what you're gonna feel when mm -hmm. you're making out, this is what's gonna feel like, don't fall for it, you can have that feeling with anybody that you made out with. I love that. Right? I love it's that not man. actually what love is. So Just that's, your you know, body reacting. So, if you, you know, so, don't, yeah. so don't make out. Yeah. And if you find yourself catching yourself doing that, know that that's what that is and, and, and cut it off because you know that it's going to, it can become overwhelming. You oh know? my gosh, Something I'm like that. I my love kids, that. thank you. You're Great welcome. Job. That was yeah, amazing. Yeah, my little guy, <laughs> sounds so weird. You know when little kids get up and they have like the little boner and stuff? Like he didn't know what that is. Of course he's four, so he's like, what is that, mom? Like, why is it standing like that? So explaining to him just to like his body reaction. Like, you know what I mean? Because that's going to happen for boys. Like we're talking about the female, but for a little young boy, when they start older and dating and kissing, that can happen. Yeah. And that's an embarrassment for them too. So we have to also teach our young boy that that just the reaction of a body yeah. because of that. So then when they can know like, okay, that boundaries of like, okay, this is getting too far, you know? Mm -hmm. I so. heard a sex therapist, Kristen Hobson, actually teach mm -hmm. about this the other day. And she was saying her son came to her dad or her husband and he had an erection and just straight as day, he's like, yeah, that's called an erection. That's when yeah. blood flows to your penis. You're gonna have those all, all the time. The time. Yeah. Done, boom. Normal, they know what it me. is, normal. Like, yeah. And he said, she said by doing that, she took away the shame too. So when it happens again, he's not like, I'm bad, I'm wrong. Yeah. Like, you're a boy, dude. That's going to happen for the rest of your life. Right. So it's Boundaries. just science. I know? have a funny story with Boundaries. that. So my, my son, who's now 10, but when he was little, he would get an Every erection morning. all the time. Yeah. All the time. And he would, like, we were in the grocery store to be like, Mom, my penis is big again. <laughs> <laughs> like, oh they like, just move on to the grocery store. <laughs> yeah. okay. It would happen all the time. Oh and I remember gosh. talking to my husband, because like, he was my first son. Mm. I'm like, what, what do we do about this? Like, and he would play with it all the time. And he's like, oh, look, it's big. I got it big in the tub. And I'm like, I don't know what to do about this. Like, <laughs> husband, like, go in there and talk to yeah, and my about husband. My thing. husband's oh, advice was husband. just like that. He was like, just don't draw attention to it. Don't what? make a big deal out of it. He's like, it's going to continue to happen lots. It's just the male it's body. It's normal, and that means you're yeah. healthy. Yeah, yeah. So, he, so we did. We just let it go. Mm -hmm. And then eventually he stopped announcing it at the grocery store. Because yeah. <laughs> it wasn't that cool anymore. Yeah. Don't yeah. you love it? Yeah. You like yeah. people looking at you like, yep, that's a, that's a normal Tuesday here. I have to put in another prop for these, for these books. So the reason why I love these books so much is because it starts so naturally. Because we are talking about... The kids ask the question, where do babies come from? Every single kid in the history yep. of humans yeah. have asked that question, right? So this first book asks that. That question, where where did I come from? How did I, and it shows a mom with a baby in her tummy. Like, it's so well done. And the pictures, and it talks about how loved you were. And you have a belly button because that's where you were attached to your mom. Mm. Like, it talks, it's so good. It talks about how you ate from your mom's breast, which is another thing yep. that you need to talk to your kids <laughs> about, right? Yeah. So that's that one. Then there's this other one, book two, where this actually talks about sex. It talks about getting married. It talks about boys and girls' bodies changes. Wow. And so the puberty to look forward to. And then you get married and you fall in love. It has like this wedding thing. Um, and then it talks about husbands and wives. It has a picture of them laying in bed. And it <laughs> says that they, they have this connection. And that's where sex is. And it does say, oh, look, I put it right here. <laughs> he can fit his penis into her vagina. His semen flows inside her and their bodies feel good all over. They want to be alone during sex so they can think only of each other. This is the way babies are made. A husband can't make a baby by himself. A wife can't make a baby by herself. Um, but it's it's good. I was nervous when I read this because I was like, <laughs> I can't fill <laughs> my kids. I can't say the penis fills in the vagina. Yes. But when I did, my kids are like, hmm. and then, but it was just a fact. Like they yeah. have to learn it from somewhere, right? And I love the context that this book puts together. Yeah. It walks them through their puberty, their changes, and my kids are like, I'm not gonna like that. I'm like, you will one yeah. day. And when you fall in love and get married, it's all like this. It's so good, you guys. So that's well, just level two. Rather, what about level three yeah. and four? Like what? I mean, I, maybe we haven't read. I know I haven't. Yet. I haven't so gotten one, to. So these are Christian-based books. We will put that out. It does mention God. So. Um, they are Christian based. They're not any particular religion. They're just Christian based. Yeah. 
Um, so this one, number three, is why God cares about sex. Ooh. So God's design for sex. Um, and then it has some examples of stories like mom, dad, and kid, like um, dialogue between right. each other. And then it has some questions to discuss. Like here's one, when have you heard kids joke about sex? Mm. Why do you think they do that? Mm. So then it gives you conversation topics with the kids. Um, yeah, it's it's great. It talks and about... And to also say, these books are just suggestions. Yeah, you can yeah. always personalize it to and yourself. And there's a lot you of can, other books I've used, yeah, too. They get yeah. You personalize it. Started. You get it going. You can read it yourself and be like, this is what I, the approach I'm going to take. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. just a guide to yeah. get you going. So you don't have to open it and be like... So I think that's what's important. So when we're teaching, we can read, 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 read. Then we, we know our children. Yep. We know our home. So we personalize it to how our kids would want to learn. Exactly. But so exactly. For me, I would rather have that really bonding moment with my child to teach them instead of them at seventh grade, little Joey's like, yeah, do you know what sex is? Like, you <laughs> that's how little Joey's going to do it. That's how little Joey's going to be Joey's teaching. Teach you know, yeah. and so like, just to, to take control yeah. and be like, I, and I know that I have friends who are like, I'm so scared. Like, I was never given the talk, yeah. so I have nothing to model after. Yeah. So learning from you guys has been helpful, reading books. And like, if, yeah. you, aren't, if you aren't confident yet and your hands are trembling, just okay. read the book. Mm -hmm. Thank you for joining our conversation. Yeah, and if you enjoyed this episode, be sure to subscribe to our channel and hit that bell notification so that you don't miss our next episode. Are you ready for more? Click on the next video for more Brave Conversations. And if you have some brave topics you'd like to discuss, leave your suggestions below. We'd love to hear from you. See you, See next, you next week. week. Hey, brave girl, how you do the things that you do?